Well, it could have been very easy not to bother going to the gym this morning. I have to say, uh, I didn't feel like it at all. But having done it now, I'm feeling a million times better and all ready for the day. And because I haven't been about for a few days, uh, the first job of today is um, getting on top of all those things that I've missed out on the last few days. Just while I'm on this short drive into town, there was one thing I wanted to just kind of round off, I guess, from last time's vlog, all about Ecotristia and their price changes. And it came up in the comments after I posted the video. And I, I, I shouldn't have overlooked it. It's something I should have mentioned that I just want to talk about now very quickly. So I, I went through a load of figures and um, basically the conclusion at the end was uh, the new Ecotristia prices were cheaper than the old ones, which was great. And um, that was very relevant to uh, me and my car uh, and having a smaller battery. But at some point, because the uh, unit rate is more expensive on the new price plan, uh, it's got to become more expensive. One of my subscribers very kindly did the maths for me. It saved me getting my toes cold while I was counting on them. Um, at the point between 23 and 24 kilowatt hours, that is kind of that, the handover point. That's when anything after 24 kilowatt hours, it becomes more expensive on the new price plan. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still not gonna be as expensive as fossil fuel, and it's still not gonna be as expensive as Shell are saying they're gonna be. So it's, you know, we're charging at service stations. We accept, as I said before, if we put petrol in our car at service station, we pay over the odds for it. If we charge up at home, it's cheap. If we charge up away from home and we charge up in a, a prime location, it's gonna be more expensive. Such is life, supply and demand. So um, I just wanted to make that point. I didn't want to come away from that and just leave it as it's cheaper because clearly at some point it's not. But, um, and that's where it is, between 23 and 24 kilowatt hours. I'm afraid today is going to be a bit of a bitty day. I've got a, I've got a list, a list of jobs to do, and um, my post-it note here, which uh, don't look much, but unfortunately nothing seems to be in the same place. So I'm, I'm doing quite well already, but it just means I'm going to be in and out of the car quite a lot today. So um, with that in mind, there's a couple of things that I've been wanting to talk about, and um, I think probably th today's an ideal day to do it. While I'm just in and out of the car, I can just um, cover them in sort of short, sharp bites. Uh, and by the way, I hope you like this new angle. I tried it out in the last video. It was quite dark. I want to try it out again today. If um, if you don't, let me know uh, and I'll stop doing it. But um, I thought it was getting a bit boring with you sat up in the windscreen just looking at me. So uh, we'll give it a go and see if it's any good. It's always nice to keep things fresh. And doing all this driving around today gives um, me the perfect opportunity to talk about the first thing that I wanted to talk about as far as um, driving styles. Do you use regen, yes or no? Uh, lots of EVs have got such powerful regen, they talk about one pedal driving, it's something that the new uh, Leaf is gonna have on it. Uh, this one, yes it's got regen, it regens in D mode, if I pull it into B mode, it regens a little bit heavier. It's not powerful regen, uh, but it is enough to slow the car down. I have always, from day one, driven this car with Eco on and B mode, because I figured, that's the most economical way of driving, that's how I'm going to uh, make the battery last the longest with it being a, slow, uh, a small battery. When I start sort of looking around on the internet and looking at different forums and chat rooms, it seems to me like there's a real divide. And the people that don't drive it in B mode and Eco all the time, as far as they're concerned, they get better mileage. So I wanted to give it a go. Now, I don't have any figures at the moment because I've only just started doing it the last couple of days. But what I have noticed is when I drive in B mode, uh, what I find I do is I continue accelerating until the last moment that I think I need to and then I lift off and the regen does the braking for me. So with that in mind, I probably use more power pushing the car forward in the hope that there'll be sufficient regen for me not to have to use the brakes, which is great. But the battery doesn't regenerate the power back into itself from B mode as fast as it outputs with me putting my foot on the accelerator. I never really thought about it much before, but what I'm finding I'm doing now is leaving it in D and using acceleration sense in the old fashioned style that we used to do in petrol and diesel cars, 
um, more efficiently. So I'm lifting off the accelerator a lot earlier to allow it to um, still regen, just not as strong, into the hazard that I'm coming onto, whether that's a bend or um, just up to, to traffic. And I think that's a more efficient way of driving. As I say, I've, I haven't got the figures. I can't say to you that I get X amount more miles, but it feels more efficient to me. And um, I think, uh, and this is just my opinion after a couple of days of doing it, I think I can make it more efficient by driving it in D uh, and thinking more about how I use the accelerator. Just while I'm making my lunch, it gives me a perfect chance just to uh, cover the next little topic I wanted to talk about. And that's um, electric aeroplanes. Uh, not something that I have a great knowledge about, so I, I don't intend to uh, insult your intelligence by trying to explain how these things work, because I have no idea. Um, I want to take a slightly more holistic look at it, really. Uh, so Airbus, Siemens and Rolls-Royce have um, collaborated and they're designing uh, and making a, a sort of a small passenger plane. Uh, and the reason it's of interest at the moment is because the engines that they're looking at building around it uh, are effectively hybrids. They're um, electric, electric motors that work alongside the normal engines. And um, you know, the exciting thing is they are looking to the future now. And this won't just stop at hybrids. This will continue and this will ultimately uh, end up with an electric plane. Now, the reason that's exciting for me is because um, what it means to airports uh, what it means to flight paths and what it means to kind of future transportation. At the moment, most airports, most big airports are in and around big cities uh, and to expand them any further because they need expanding because there is more and more demand. Um, it's becoming nigh on impossible. Certainly here in the UK, uh, the battle over expanding Gatwick or Heathrow has been going on for years and um, I still don't know that we're any closer to ever finalising it. Uh, the reason these big battles are going on are because of um, effectively noise and pollution. People don't want the extra aeroplanes polluting the skies above their houses and um, creating additional noise. So electric um, motors in aeroplanes They've got more than enough power, it's going to be cheaper to run them, uh, more efficient, and it's going to be a lot quieter, which should then, in turn, allow people to build bigger airports, but without the adverse effects of all the additional pollution and noise that we get at the moment. Now, I think you'll agree that is a good-looking lunch. I'm going to enjoy every mouthful of that. So that is a quick pit stop for lunch. Uh, now I've got to get to the shops to uh, get stuff ready for dinner tonight and for the rest of the week. And uh, then I'll pick the kids up. So um, bear with me, I'll speak to you again soon. Well that's that, shopping done, um, I think. I've pretty much done all the jobs I can do today, which is handy because I've now got to rush over and pick the kids up from school. Just gives me a chance to talk about the last thing I want to talk about today, and that's a company called Byton. Now they are a, um, I say a startup, they're not a startup, they've been around for a, a little while now, but they ultimately, they're making a, an EV. Nothing spectacular about that. Their EV at the moment is a concept car. They're going to show it in January at a car show. Um, I don't normally like talking about concept cars because that's all they are. Everybody and anyone can make a concept car. I can make one up um, and I'll never produce it, much like a lot of the manufacturers. But the, um, the kind of the little twist and a little interesting thing about um, this one is that they are openly saying they are more like Apple than Tesla. And by that, they mean they want to take their time come to the market with something that works and works really well but they're not so much about the car itself they're gonna, it's going to be an SUV it's going to have a decent battery it's going to go a decent range but it's it's about what's inside the car that um, makes it a little bit different it's about the technology within and um, just looking at it you can see that kind of um, expectation that the future will be autonomous driving uh, the fact that yes it has still got a steering wheel but there's screens all around it there's even a touch screen in the middle of the steering wheel uh, 
these are big clues to where we're heading, definitely. And um, I think this particular company are really looking towards that as opposed to trying to make a car that can be manufactured now. So the reason I think it's interesting is because I think that that is just a little glimpse into the future and the not too distant future either. And uh, yeah, have a little look. I'll put the um, picture up on the screen, but uh, I think there's, uh, I should be able to get the link still, which I'll put in the description below, uh, just to show you what they're doing. Uh, there's nothing, as I say, particularly exciting about it. It's just, I, I like the idea that they're not rushing to the market to try and compete with today. Uh, this is what we can expect to see in a few years time. So um, I think that's all the little snippets that I've had stored up that I've been wanting to talk about covered today, which is great. Uh, hopefully uh, it's been an interesting vlog for you. If it has, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and I'll um, see you again soon. Take care.